Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I'll be talking about the classic Mac Pro 4.1. And although the hardware is over 10 years old, it's still very popular today in the market and not without reason as you will see. During the video, I will start with a Mac Pro that I bought at an auction and I will upgrade it completely, both from a software and hardware perspective to a powerful machine that's capable of running Big Sur. Both the classic Mac Pro and its predecessor, the Power Mac G5, always drew my attention. I really like the design and find that even today it still stands out. You will see that with a few minor and very affordable upgrades, you can bring this machine completely up to date. Let's start by having a look at this beautiful hardware, but before we do so, I'd like to mention that I also have a blog, gensd.be, where you will find all information that I will share in this video and more. So if you plan to go through this process yourself, I really recommend you to have a look there. As mentioned, this specific Mac Pro, the 4.1, is on the market since 2009. Other computers from around this time look terribly outdated today, but I find that this Mac Pro still looks really nice. On the back we can find three USB 2 ports, two FireWire 800 ports, which distinguish it from the 3.1 and earlier, optical and analog audio, and two 1 gigabit network ports. On this footage I already replaced the NVIDIA GT120 that came with it originally. On the front we see a tray for two CD or DVD drives, the power button, audio, and more USB and FireWire 800 ports. Time to have a look inside. Simply by pulling the lever on the back, the side panel can be removed smoothly. Inside we see that, although this is an x86 based machine, it doesn't really have a standard design. The CPU and memory are installed on a separate removable board. In the middle of the case, we can find the upgraded video card here and the rest of the PCIe slots. Storage is easy to remove by using one of the four convenient brackets. Larger 5.25 inch drives are fit into another removable housing. As you see, everything looks pretty clean and it's easy to access and work on. My Mac Pro 4.1 has the following specifications. As you can see, it's only a single CPU model, too bad, but at least that gives me some advantages for upgrading the CPU, which I'll explain later. From a software perspective, this one was still running macOS 10.5.8, better known as Leopard. I decided to divide the whole upgrade process in 10 steps, and as a result, the video became a bit longer than initially was the ID. First, I will upgrade the memory, as that can be done without any software changes. In step 2 and 3, I'll upgrade to the latest supported OS X version for the 4.1 called El Capitan. But before I can do so, I need to do an intermediate upgrade to Snow Leopard. Once that is complete, I will perform a firmware upgrade, making my 4.1 think it's a 5.1 instead. That allows an upgrade to High Sierra as well. Besides allowing the upgrade to High Sierra, the firmware update also allows a CPU upgrade, which I will do in the next step. In step 7, I will prepare for a clean install of Big Sur. But before that, I will install an SSD, followed by the actual installation. And finally, in the last step, I will do an upgrade of the GPU to a metal supported card. Going back a bit in time, this is how the machine looked like right after I picked it up. I used a can of compressed air just to remove most of the dust. Unfortunately, the beautiful Belgian rainy weather wasn't very helpful with that. After some more cleaning, it was time to start with the whole upgrade process. Let's start with step 1, and that is the memory upgrade. First, we need to remove the CPU board, which we can do using these levers in front of it. 
Then we can simply, as is the case with basically any PC or Mac, remove the dims and replace them with different ones. I'm removing 3 times 2 GB of DDR3 for a total of 6 GB and we'll replace these with 2 times 16 GB for a total of 32. That's it, and we can just reinsert the CPU board into our Mac Pro. Let's see if all of that worked. We can hear the chime, that's a good sign. And we can see that the operating system is loading. Once we arrived in OS X, we can check about this Mac, which we will use very often during the rest of the video. Here we can see that the upgrade to 32GB was a success. We can also see our starting point from software view here, which is 1058 or better known as Leopard. Up to the next step. I'll launch the installation of Snow Leopard, which we need to do before we can upgrade to anything higher. I do have the DVD media, but if you do not, it's pretty easy to find the ISO image on the internet. After quite some waiting and a final restart, we are greeted with a Snow Leopard intro video. This brings back some memories. As you can see in About This Mac, Step 2 brought us up to 10.6 or Snow Leopard. From here, we can upgrade to El Capitan. This is the last official version which is supported on the Mac Pro 4.1 by Apple. I'll copy the installer using SCP, but you can also download it from Apple's website. I provided a link in the description and also on my blog. Unfortunately, when I tried to open the installer, I received an error message. After a bit of searching, I found out that we first need to install an additional update in Snow Leopard before we can upgrade to El Capitan. So let's do that and reboot when everything is ready. In the meanwhile, I also took the opportunity to change the OS language to English. Apologies for not doing that earlier. Let's give the installer another try now that the updates are installed. And as we can see, the pre-installation tool runs and gets installed successfully. Once it's complete, we can just launch the install OS X El Capitan application and click through the necessary steps. Again, as you could probably guess, we are up for quite some waiting. Fortunately, I fast forwarded all of that here. And there we are. By looking at the background, we can already tell, but to be sure, let's have another look at about this Mac. As you can see, we are now on 10.11.6 or El Capitan. Time for step 4. Here we will upgrade the firmware of our Mac Pro 4.1 to the firmware of a 5.1. The hardware of both models is nearly identical and by performing this upgrade or patch better, we add support for newer hardware, which we need for step 6 where we will upgrade the CPU. Before we can perform the upgrade, which as you can imagine is not something Apple really supports, we need to disable the System Integrity Protection or SIP. We can do that by rebooting into recovery mode by holding Command and R during the boot time. Once we arrived in recovery mode, start the terminal from the Utilities menu and type CSR Util Disable. This is, unfortunately, not really visible on the capture. After that, we can reboot to OS X again. In OS X, download the 5.1 firmware from the Apple website, link is in the description and on my blog again, and after that, download one of the tools to perform the patch. I'll be using the tool from Netcast. First, mount the DMG with the firmware update, then right-click and open the patcher. In the tool, choose Upgrade to 2010 firmware. Now that the tool did the necessary actions, we need to flash the firmware update as instructed. For this, we need to start by shutting down the system. And then we need to hold the power button and wait for a blinking power LED and tone.
Once you hear it, you can release the power button. As you can see in the background, we get a progress bar and the DVD drive opens. Once the firmware update completed and all went well, the system reboots to OS X. After the reboot, looking at system report, we can see that the model identifier changed to Mac Pro 5.1 and the bootroom version changed as well. This was a success, so time for the next step, and that is to upgrade to High Sierra. I already downloaded the installer, which came from Apple's website, same as with El Capitan. When launching it, it tells us to perform another firmware upgrade before we can continue. This works in exactly the same way as what we just did when upgrading to a 5.1, so we continue and shut down the machine. Then, hold the power button and wait for the tone. High Sierra is the last official version supported on the 5.1 or a firmware upgraded 4.1. It's also the last version to work properly without the metal compatible graphics card. The GT120 that came with my Mac is not one of those. So without upgrading that hardware, it's better to stop after the step and stay with High Sierra. More about this later. Now that the firmware upgrade completed, which we can see by the newer boot from version and system report, we can continue with the installation of High Sierra. Again, just click through the installer and, once again, be very patient. When everything completes, let's keep the tradition and check about this Mac. Here we can see that now we already moved to 10.13.6. Time for the next step, and that is to upgrade the CPU of our Mac. The 4.1 originally came with Intel Xeon Nihalem CPUs. Since we upgraded the firmware to 5.1, this also adds support for a newer generation of these Intel CPUs called Westmere. This means we can safely upgrade our Xeon W3520 to Xeon X5600 series. The most powerful CPU which you can install in the 4.1 and 5.1 is the Xeon X5690. I'll perform an upgrade to a X5650. This should give a proper performance boost and it only costed me about 10 euro. The CPU upgrade starts with removing the CPU board and memory. Next we can remove the heatsink with a hex key where we need to untighten the 5 screws that hold it to the CPU board. It's a bit of fiddling but after that we can carefully remove the large heatsink. As you can see here, the dust definitely wasn't removed everywhere, so let's clean that up properly together with the old thermal paste on the CPU. Now we can remove the CPU by lifting the lever and simply take it out. We will replace the CPU by that X5650 as mentioned and the process is just the same but in reverse order. Insert the CPU in the socket and close the lever. Then best to apply some fresh thermal paste and we can reinstall the heatsink. The two pins help you to find the right position.
After fixing the heatsink, we need to reinstall the memory. And we can reinsert the CPU board into the case. Time to test if the CPU upgrade was a success. This is always a bit of a nervous moment. Fortunately, we see that the Apple logo appears and we see that OS X is booting. Once it's booted, let's check what it has to say about our new CPU. Here we see it's now reported as a 6-core Xeon, exactly as we want it. Just to compare, I did a benchmark with Geekbench before the CPU upgrade, and I repeated the same afterwards. The difference is really nice to see and definitely worth the 10 euro. The next step in the journey is to create a bootable patched installation media for Big Sur. We need this patched version as Apple no longer supports the Mac Pro 4.1 and 5.1. To do this, I will use Micropatcher Automator. The links are in the description and on my blog again with some more explanation. Before we use the tool, we need to prepare our USB drive first. Insert the USB drive, open Disk Utility, select the USB drive on the left side and choose to raise it as Mac OS X Extended. Then we can extract the tool from the archive which we downloaded and run it by right clicking and choosing Open. In the tool, choose to download the Big Sur installer and let the tool do the rest. Again, this takes a quite long time as the installation files are quite large. As we see, the creation of the installation media was a success, time to move to the next step. Step 8 is another hardware upgrade. This time I will install an SSD, on which, in the next step, we will install Big Sur. SSDs got really cheap, the one I got costed around 30 euro, and they make a world of difference in terms of speed. As mentioned in the beginning, the Mac Pro has 4 brackets for 3.5 inch hard disks. Most of the SATA SSDs come in a 2.5 inch format, so we need to use an enclosure to properly install the SSD. Just make sure that the result matches the SATA power and data layout of a real 3.5 inch disk. Our 2.5 inch SSD goes inside and externally the pinch match with the 3.5 inch hard disk. We can simply slide our SSD in the SATA connector and fix it on the bottom of the enclosure. Then all that's left to do is to close it and to install the bracket which we got from the case onto it like on a regular hard disk. I did have to replace the screws as the thread was a bit different than what was present in the bracket. There we go, ready to install in the Mac Pro. Time for step 9. We are almost there. In this step, we will be doing a clean install from the USB drive, which was created in step 7, on the SSD, which we installed in the previous step. To do so, we need to boot the system while holding the Option key. Once the bootloader shows up, it should show two entries present on our USB drive. First time, we need to choose the one on the right with the USB logo and as you saw, the Mac immediately turned off. Now we have to repeat the process but choose the other entry with the disk icon. Both steps are required to prepare a few things for this to work, so you can skip it or you will get a forbidden sign. The Mac is now booting from the USB drive and will start the Big Sur installer. 
Once we arrived in the installer, let's first prepare our SSD by starting Disk Utility. In the View menu, we choose to see all devices. Then we can select the SSD on the left side and choose Arrays as APFS. All seem to go fine here, so we can close Disk Utility and continue with the macOS Big Sur installation. Once more, all of this takes quite some time. After the installation completes, all we have to do is answer some basic questions about the system. And there we are, Big Sur on our Mac Pro 4.1. Let's follow traditions and check about this Mac. As you can see, especially with the screen recording on, the performance is just terrible. This is because we still have the original video card, the GT120 in the Mac, which is not metal supported. Which seamlessly brings us to the last step, and that is to upgrade the video card to a metal supported model. There is really a lot to tell about which card to choose here, and I shared more about that on my blog if you're interested. But for this video, I'll just go for an AMD RX 560, which is metal supported and can be powered fully from the PCIe slot. So let me shut down the system and remove the old GT120. First, we need to remove the bracket that holds the card in place. And we shouldn't forget to move the lock for the PCIe cards as well. Then we can insert our replacement card, the RX 560, in the same slot. If all goes well, there are no further actions needed in order to use this card. Big Sur supports it out of the box. This last upgrade gives us back the fluent experience which we wanted, and gives you a system that is comfortable and snappy to work with. This concludes the video. As you noticed, although it took quite some time, there are plenty of reasons why the Mac Pro 4.1 is still popular, especially keeping in mind the limited budget I spent for a Mac that is definitely no punishment to use, even in 2021. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you liked the video, and if you did, don't hesitate to put a thumbs up. If you like this or similar content, please consider subscribing to my channel. I really hope to see you back here soon.